Hi gang, I'm Robin Schneider and I'm excited to be guest lecturing on Zoe Hong's channel today. I teach digital fashion at Otis College of Art and Design and I'm the author of Adobe for Fashion, The Ultimate Guide to Drawing Flats. In this video, I'm going to teach you some Photoshop basics to create a mood board. So let's get started. Before we start the mood board, I want to show you a few of the different tools we're going to use. You'll notice that I'm working on a Windows computer. If you're on a Mac, that's no problem. Once you're inside Photoshop, the interface looks exactly the same. A few of the key commands are different, but I promise to call those out when we get to them. The first tool we need to know is up on top of the toolbar, and it's called the Move tool. This is the tool that allows you to move things around the page. All you need to do is click, and then you can drag items, photos, whatever you're working with around the page. So it's pretty straightforward. The next tool is Transform. The shortcut is Control or Command T. This puts a bounding box around the object and it allows you to scale it. When you're scaling an object, it's really important that you always click on the corner and hold the Shift key while you're doing it so that it scales to a consistent size. We don't want to accidentally squash right, or extend or do some weird things to our images. I see that happen a lot and it drives me crazy when students do that. If you're not happy with the transformation you made, you can just go up here and click this little circle with a slash through it and it'll restore what you had before. So let's go back, Control or Command T to transform. I'm going to hold my Shift key and drag this out to make it the same size as my other skirts. That looks pretty good. And if you want to rotate it, all you do is move your rotation tool, or the same tool. As you move into the corner, it turns into a little double-ended arrow, and now I can just click and drag to rotate my image. And if I hold the Shift key, it'll snap into place at 45s and 90 degree angles. When you're happy with the size and the shape, you're going to click this little check mark to commit your transformation. Another thing we can do is play with the Layers panel. This panel shows me what I have in my document. You can see the background layer is white, and then each additional layer has a skirt in it. Currently, the blue skirt's on top, but I could take the layer with the blue skirt and drag it down behind the purple and gray so it's in the back. So it's really easy to restack my layers and move things around my board. You'll also notice that I just selected the blue, and you can see that the colors changed on the blue layer, showing me that that one's active. I could click on the purple layer instead and, whoops, and move my purple skirt around. The same goes for the gray. So whatever layer you're working in, you will be able to see it in your layers panel. You can turn the eyes on and off to make things visible or not visible. And for now, I think that's basically what we're going to do with the palette. We can cover more advanced skills in future videos. The last thing we need to do is learn how to mask. And masking is a professional way of erasing. Erasing is bad. Erasing is destructive. So we are going to mask instead. And the way you add a mask to something is select the layer that you want to mask. Let's work with the purple and then click on this little icon down at the bottom that looks a little bit like a camera and that will apply the layer mask. And all it really did was put a white box right next to the thumbnail of our skirt. Here's the cool thing about layer masks. If you grab a paintbrush and the one you want to take is this brush right here. If you click and hold on it you can see it says brush tool. If you paint on a mask in black and the way you do that is select the mask I have my brush with black and I'm just going to paint on the canvas. See what happens? It's literally erasing my image, but in this case masking it. And masking is non-destructive because at any time I can switch from black to white by clicking this little double arrow and paint back over in the same place and it will paint back or restore the image that I had masked off. So this is a much more professional way to erase things because we can always restore it if we change our mind later. And in fashion, things change all the time. So you want to work smart and be prepared for those inevitable changes. All right, that's a few tools. Let's start making our mood board. I'm going to start by opening a new file. So to do that, we're going to go up to File, New, 
because our final output is going to be printed, we're going to click on print and I'm going to open up a tabloid size page. We want to make sure that the resolution is 300 and the color mode is RGB to get the best possible print quality. And I want this to be landscape orientation, so I'm going to click on this little icon here. So you can see that my width is 17, my height is 11, 300 resolution, and I'm in RGB. And now we'll click Create. So here is my new artboard all ready to start working on. But before we get started, I want to make sure that we have the same workspace up on our screen so that it'll make a little more sense to you. So this drop down up here in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to click on the arrow and reset essentials. And you should do the same on your computer so that our uh, panels will match. I don't need the libraries panel, so I'm going to grab that tab and just drag it onto my page and click the little X to delete it. That frees up a little more space to work on my page. The panel we're going to focus on is the layers panel, so I'm going to drag it out so we can see it a little bit better. Right now, my layers panel has a rather large thumbnail size because I changed it. Yours are going to look different. Yours are going to look very small like this but I find that a little difficult to work with. It helps if you can see what's in your layers. So what I'd like you to do is click on this icon, which we call the hamburger, and go down to panel options, click on the large thumbnail, and click OK. And now we've got a large thumbnail to work from. All right, so we've got our file set up. We need to start adding our images. One option is to just drag them from your desktop onto the artboard, and if you're on a Mac, that's probably your first choice. But since I'm on a Windows computer, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to go up to File and select Place Embedded. Notice there's a choice between Place Linked and Place Embedded. Embedded is going to set this up so the file stays, or the image, stays in my file, and I won't lose it if I open it up on another computer, and that is important. So you always want to stick to Embedded. To get my image, I'm going to select it and click Place, and it places my image. But you see this little X there? You need to click the check mark up here to commit the image, or hit Enter on your keyboard. I like to get all my images in place first. So Edit, Place, whoops, I lied. File Place, Embedded, and we'll grab the next image and click Place. And I'll do the same for the rest of the images. All right, so now I have all my images in the file. Let's talk about how to attack this. I like to turn them all off and turn them back on one at a time and work with them that way. So let me turn on the eye for this image, make sure I'm in that layer, and I'm going to edit this a little bit. I'm going to Control or Command T to transform, hold my Shift key and drag from the corner to make this a little bit bigger so it fits the full height of my page. When I'm dealing with rectangular shapes, I don't like them to be floating on the page because then you just see the rectangle rather than the texture or the image that you want to be focused on. I'm going to go ahead and move this into this corner. The next image will turn it on and will activate that layer. Also, a little bit small, so Control or Command T to transform, hold the Shift key and we'll drag this a little bit larger and just move it into place, maybe over this way a little bit and click the check mark to commit it. Now you'll notice that this takes up the full screen and we can't see the other image and this is where reorganizing those layers comes in handy. I can just drag this one beneath the other one so I can see all my images. All right, the next image will turn on and will activate the layer. And for this one, I just want to select the staircase. And we're going to do it using this tool right here. This tool is called the Quick Selection Tool. And it works really well about 90% of the time. To make it larger or smaller, I'm going to use my bracket key. My right bracket makes it larger, the left smaller. And I'm just going to click and drag over the areas I want to select. And you can see how quickly and easily this selected, let's make this a little bit smaller, selected the image that I want. And that's the way this tool works. It's really, really simple. If the contrast between the area you want to select and the image is strong, it works beautifully. 
Now you can see these little lines here. These are called marching ants. And if you ever need to deselect or get rid of them, the shortcut key is Control or Command D, and that will deselect your marching ants. But I want them back, so I'm going to undo Control or Command Z to get my selection back. And here's another layer mask trick. If you have the area you want selected, all you have to do is click on the little layer mask icon and it will automatically mask it off for you. So now I'm going to tape the shape, Control or Command T. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Maybe rotate the direction and put it here. Actually, what if I rotate it and place it like that? I think that looks pretty cool. Let's move on to the next image. The next image we have, we'll turn it on, is this little moth or butterfly I found. I thought the colors were beautiful and it reminded me of embroidery and quilting. I just thought it was lovely. So again, we're going to use the same tool, the quick selection tool, and I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and click and drag across this image. And you can see it is selecting a little bit slower than the other because there's a little more color variation, but it is selecting this butterfly for me. Now what if I want to zoom in and get a better look at what I'm doing? Well, Control or Command plus and minus will do that very nicely for you. And then to move around the page, you need the hand tool. The shortcut key for that is to hold down the space bar. And while you're holding down the space bar, it'll be the hand tool. As soon as you release the space bar, it's going to go back to the tool you were previously using. So what happens if you're making a selection with this tool and you accidentally select an area that you don't want? Very simple solution. Hold down your Alt or Option key and drag through the area you don't want and it'll remove it from your selection. We can use the same technique we did before, which is just to click on the layer mask icon and it'll get rid of the background information. Another way to quickly kind of zoom out is to go Control or Command-0 and that'll zoom to full page. That works really nicely. So I'll click on my butterfly layer and uh, we'll just leave it here for the moment. Maybe rotate it, Control or Command T, and let's put it in more of this direction, I guess, something like that. And Control Zero or Command Zero will get me back to my full screen. All right, what else? We have this image, which I think is really cool but I don't want it so high up on my page or covering everything. I want it below some of these other elements. So I'm just going to drag the layer beneath a couple of other layers. I'm going to move it to where I want it, but it's really big and overpowering. I could transform, control T, hold my shift key and move it smaller, but then I end up with these really hard edges and I don't want those hard edges, not quite. So what I'm going to do instead is scale it to the size I want, add a layer mask to it, just a plain white one, and then with the paintbrush, I'm going to paint black and try to get rid of some of the areas I don't want. I'll turn off this butterfly for a while so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go up to my brushes and make the brush a little bit harder and then I'm going to paint out some of these circles here. So I was kind of thinking, what if I paint it around this a little bit so it followed the curve here and paint around this and maybe around this one. Something like that. And maybe even curve this a little bit. So now I've dealt with that, but I've got this hole here I don't like. So Maybe we'll move this whole image over and maybe we will make it a little bit bigger. Control or Command T and cover up that space. I have one more image that I have uh, in another file and let's copy and paste it. We're going to use again the quick selection tool and select this image. Now I am going to copy it. Actually I see one little bit I didn't get so I'm going to alt click to get rid of that. Now I'm going to copy it. Control C or Command C. I'm going to go back to the page I was working on and paste it. Command V or Control V. And you can see it put it down here so we can't see it because it's hiding. So let's take and move that to the top of the stack. And let's make this image bigger. Control T for transform. Hold the shift key and drag. 
and maybe rotate it and let it sit over here. All right, last thing is some type. And to put type on something, all you need to do is click on the type tool. Let's make sure we're in the top layer. I'm going to click on the page, and then I can type in a title for my mood board. And I'm going to call it Reverberation. And you click the little check mark. To change the size, I can Control T again or Command T and then shift drag the corner and to change the color because black down here is really not working for me I'm going to double click on the letter T in the layers panel go up here and change it to white and click OK and click the check mark and there's my title let's take a better look at this I can go to full screen Control zero, remember brings us full screen so we can get a really good look at it and there you have your first mood board. Now it's really really easy to go back and edit this because of the way we created it. Maybe the swirl here I don't want there maybe I want it on this side and I want to transform and rotate it so it's coming from this direction and then maybe this piece here now doesn't work maybe I want it over here possibly even rotated so it's sitting like this in the corner and maybe it's even going off the page a little bit and maybe I want to move my butterfly or some other element I can go ahead and do that really easily so we click on the butterfly and we can move this guy around maybe I want him up here but then I need to change the layer order to get this up on top when you're done you're gonna save your file file save as we're going to save it as a Photoshop file. I'll just call it mood board for now. And always, always, always number them. So I'm going to call this one 01. That way, if I go back later and I make any kind of changes or adjustments to it, I'll save the next one as version 2. Never save over your originals because you never know when you might need to go back and edit them. So that's what I've got to show you today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something new and drop your questions in the comments. You can visit Zoe's On the Computer playlist for more Adobe videos and also visit my channel for tons of Adobe for Fashion tutorials. All these links are in the description box below. And remember, nobody masters these skills overnight. It does take practice, but I promise it's worth it. Watch this as many times as you need, take notes and try again. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Photoshop video.